All right, welcome back guys. I know I haven't posted the videos in a very long time. I hope I will stick to a proper uploading schedule from now on. Without further ado, let's get started. In this video, I will show you a very brief introduction into the software that I use to simulate four bar linkages. I will show you a very simple workflow on how to use that software to quickly simulate the linkage that you try or imagine or you, you wanna get to, move that into Fusion 360 and actually model it. Let's get into it. All right, so my setup here is a bit weird. I am uh, using Mac, but that software only runs on Windows. So I have a parallel PC running Windows 10 over here. The software is called GIM. It's developed by a uh, university in Spain, and it's only for educational purposes. It's a very solid software. I love it, and you'll see why just now. So once you download, the download link is going to be in the description below. You just click on that, you download, you extract it, double click here, and you might, wow, my desktop is a mess. Awesome. All right. So it's developed by Inverti Basuk Country, um, and it's a really good software. So once you launch it, you'll find this empty canvas in a way. Uh, so there are different modules inside the software. You have the geometry module, the kinematics module, dynamics, synthesis, and workspace. I'm not gonna go into all of them, but I just wanna show you the workflow itself, not the specific software. So the first thing we wanna do is place points. So you place four points, we wanna do a four bar linkage. So we place four points, one point here, and one point here, another one maybe here, another one for a shorter linkage here, beautiful. After you place the point, you check, uh, you use this tool, chain of bars, you use this tool to go over these points and that will give them links or bars in between each of these points. Now, at this point, we have links, uh, bars basically, in the software is called bars, so one bar here, one bar here, one bar here, and we have the hidden link or the hidden bar here, which is the ground link. Now, these bars are now not connected with each other, so we need to connect them with the revolute joint so you can actually kind of move around and swivel and all. To do that, I can click here on the revolute joint. I click here, and then you can see when I click on this point, this point is now pivoted with a joint, uh, with a revolute joint to the ground, that invisible ground link I was talking about earlier. Now, this is connected to it. Uh, that's one, you click here and it gets the same symbol. Again, it's a revolute joint to the ground. You click on that one and then you can see it's a normal revolute joint between two links or two bars. You click on that one and again, it's a normal revolute joint between two bars. So by th at this point, we have one, two, three links and the fourth link is the ground. We have revolute joint here, here, and two other revolute joints over there. Beautiful. At this point, we finished the main four bar linkage. It's very quick, but I just want to simulate it and see what happens in the motion. For this, we need to go to the kinematics module. So when you click here, you are greeted with this. Different tools to simulate motion. Because this, this example is really, really simple, I just want to explain to you the workflow in general. You don't really need to do anything special. You just click on automatic motion and the software itself will just determine which one is going to be rotating 360 degrees and which one is going to rock back and forth. Once you do that, you can actually click, click play and then you can see uh, the mechanism in action or you can just scroll here back and forth, which is easier for me. All right, oh good. So, but at this point we have a very, very simple uh, four bar mechanism. You can see this is rotating 360 degrees. This is moving between these two points. And you, you can use your imagination to do whatever mechanism you want, you know, like this can be uh, just the motor and this can be holding, I don't know, your maybe uh, your windscreen wiper, for example. So once the motor is uh, rotating, the windscreen wiper is moving back and forth to wipe your, uh, your windscreen and so on. So it's up to your imagination. Again, so the mechanism is very, very generic, and you can see the power of this software is just to imagine something, put it here, slam on the, the links, and move on further. Now, I just want to give you some technical background quickly about um, what's the name of these links and why do they move that way. So this is considered the, the shortest link. So this link is moving 360 degrees around its pivot point, and this means that this link is called the crank. So the crank is the link that moves, uh, that rotates fully, basically. And that crank is usually attached to the motor or whatever you get your power from. 
Now, this link is just going back and forth between two points in a degree maybe of here. I don't know, maybe this is like, it looks like uh, 60 degrees or something. Now, the link that moves back and forth in this way is called uh, the rockers because it's rocking, back, it's rocking back and forth. Connecting between them is the coupler. And we also have the ground link. So it's four bar linkage. One is going to be the ground link. Two is the crank. And three is going to be the coupler. And four is going to be the rocker. All good? All good. Now, one thing that's very, very powerful about this, this software is that you can actually play around with the length of these links and see the resulting motion real time. So when you click on this uh, tool, which is modify points, and then I click on this point, and then I can change this link length and position to be whatever I want it to be, basically. And you can see in real time the updates that's happening in the resulting motion from the, um, from the rocker and also the resulting motion from here. So, oh my God, it crashed again. Apologies, so the software simply crashed. So I had to restart it quickly. So just to pick up where we left, when you change that point, you can see the change in the output motion here uh, and so on. And you can play around with this indefinitely. If you wanna know more uh, technical details about what's the name of this mechanism, uh, what's the ratio, this, what is this called and so on, you can check my Udemy course. I go into all the details. Again, the point of this video is just to give you a brief overview of the workflow of you imagining a mechanism putting it in that software, moving it to Fusion 360, and bringing it to life with 3D modeling. So for now, I'm just gonna settle into maybe this mechanism. This is enough, that's all right for now. I'm gonna take a screenshot, and I'm gonna move that into Fusion 360 and work my way from there. So let's do that right away. Now, I'm here in Fusion 360. I'm hopefully, I'm hoping that you're all aware of the, the UI and everything. I'm not gonna go through that. So that um, screenshot that we just took, we're gonna put it as a canvas. So you can go here to insert an attached canvas. You can click here and then uh, you can choose which plane you wanna have it in. I prefer uh, this plane, so you from the front view, and then you can select the image here. You click on that one, and then you select this latest screenshot right there. All right, that's good. And then you can just scale it whatever you want for this point, at this point. And uh, from this point, we can actually uh, go to canvas, right click this and calibrate this canvas. Orient me to front. And at this point, I'm just uh, kind of like giving myself um, a scale to work with. So say I want the crank to be 100 mil long. And that will scale the whole uh, canvas to make sure that the, this distance that we highlighted just now is actually 100 mil long. All right, beautiful. I can see that my Mac is actually suffering, so... What am I gonna do is nothing, actually. All right, beautiful. Um, all right, oh good. Now, once we have this in here, um, I'm just, this, this, is, this is very important for me and I think it's very important for you to learn. What I wanna do now is make sure that I build my model in a way um, that allows me to iterate and change my design as I go along the way. This is very, very, very important. The workflow is like this. You start with something that you have in your mind, you slam it into game software, you come up with a screenshot like this, you take it into Fusion 360, you play around with it, it's connected to something, and now you play the mechanism, it's not right, then you have to change it again. You go back to game software, you change things a bit like I showed you earlier, and then you take another screenshot, you put it back in. Once you bring that one back in, you need, to, you need to have a model that's well structured in such a way that when you change one sketch, everything else will update. This is the key here. If you have a proper, beautiful design tree that's kind of like consequential and everything is built on top of one another, you would have one sketch. Once you change that sketch, everything else will update. This is what we're gonna do right now. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do a simple sketch here. Create a sketch. Um, this sketch is just gonna be called the kinematic diagram. This sketch is gonna be nothing but just uh, lines that represent those links. So these lines are actually absolutely nothing special at all. So they are just lines connecting between 
the center points of these links. Um, you can clearly see that my Mac is suffering right now. I need to figure this something out, but basically you just put um, these lines here and you're good. All right, beautiful. Now, um, I will hide the canvas for now. Now, this, these four, three lines are representing um, um, the, the mechanism itself. Now, these points need to be fixed to the ground as we discussed earlier. So you click on the point, right click that and click on fix. This point is now green, which just means it's fixed to the ground. Here, the same thing, you click here, you right click here, and then you click on fix. Again, it's green, it's fixed to the ground. If you press uh, D from your keyboard, you go to dimension, and then I need to dimension uh, these links to whatever dimension they are. I'm basically constraining the length of these points. Beautiful, awesome. So this sketch is the kinematic diagram. So if I move this point here, it's just going to act exactly as the same one that was acting in, in uh, game software. So it's a simulation, it's a kinematic diagram exactly the same representation that we had earlier. So if I open up the sketch here, the canvas here, you can see that the point is following exactly the dotted lines over there. It's beautiful. Now the point of doing this sketch is that this sketch is going to be this, the, um, the main, um, th it's the main diagram. So once we finish up the whole mechanical design, the, the whole 3D design, if I change this uh, sketch, everything else will update. And you'll see what I mean just in a minute. So if I'm gonna stop that sketch and um, that sketch, I'm gonna rename it quickly to Kin um, oops, oopsie, kinematic diagram, beautiful. And then based on that sketch, I'm gonna build something called um, the mechanism skeleton. It's gonna be another sketch, which is basically just a, com a slightly complex um, 2D projection of everything that's gonna be in that assembly. So again, let's sketch again on the same plane. I'm not sure what this is on about. So you click here, yep, all good. And then in this point, I'm just gonna kind of put a representation of the links. So I found this to be helpful. So you go here at 18, I believe, uh, 20. So this is going to be, uh, this is going to be the ground at this point. Um, let me just lock this here, beautiful. Yes, that works better. And then give me a circle in the center at 20 uh, mil diameter. Uh, let's do the same thing over here. So I need to latch onto this, go to front from here, yes, all right. So again, make sure that you reference the points from the kinematic um, diagram uh, sketch because everything everything will be connected if you do. So again, this is 20 mil in uh, radius, a circle at the center with 20 mil in the diameter. Beautiful. Uh, this is good. And then the rest, I'm just gonna represent these um, these links or these bars with simple slots. So if I go to slot here, and if I go to uh, no this one center to center slot. So you click on that one, and then I need to start from this point to this point, and this is going to be 25 mil. Actually, that's a bit too small. So let's make it 30 mil. Yeah, that's right. 30 mil in diameter over here. Again, let's do the same thing. I'm going to just use it from here, from the sketch shortcuts, from here, and again, go from here to over here. The diameter here is 30. All good. Let's do it again one more time from here to over here, the diameter is 30. Beautiful. Now, the last thing we are missing is just a circle here at 20 mil in diameter and another circle here at 20 mil in diameter. Now, you can imagine this being the projection of everything that's included in my assembly. So all the lines of all the bodies are just projected into that um, sketch and that's why this sketch is called um, the mechanism skeleton. Beautiful. So this mechanism skeleton now, this sketch is based on the sketch before it. So if I right click this and edit this sketch, and if I move this point here, stop sketch, everything will update. Now I'm gonna use the mechanism skeleton sketch to 3D extrude everything that I have. By this point, if you change anything in the kinematic diagram sketch, 
everything else will update all your 3d modeling and everything else will update which is really really beautiful so you can you can see where this is going now so if i want to change my design i'd go back to game software change the model take another screenshot put it here change the kinematic diagram bam everything else will update okay uh at this point you just keep going now I, I basically have everything I need now to just make my 3D model. So I'm just gonna keep extruding basically. So I'm gonna extrude the profile. This is going to be, just keep this here. This is going to be a new component. Like, okay, this might be kind of a shortcut, but this is like, okay, this is, this is basically how I like to work. So it's gonna be a new component. Uh, first thing is, this is going to be um, the frame so these two profiles here yes beautiful are the frames you can clearly see my mac is struggling badly so 10 mil is good and let's quickly rename this to frame oopsie frame beautiful right click that and ground it because remember the frame is fixed the frame link is fixed just click ground that's it done simple again let's extrude one more time Make sure you select this to new component. Uh, click this profile here. Okay, let's just make sure we select the correct profile. Done. This is going to be uh, the second component. This is going to be, I think, yeah, this is going to be our crank. Click OK and rename it directly to crank. Beautiful. Let's keep going. Uh, hide the crank for clarity and uh, let's extrude this profile. All right, all good. Now let's extrude this the other way around. And again, make sure this is a new component. And um, this is going to be the coupler. Beautiful. And again, let's keep going. Extrude this, this and uh, this into a new component and this goes up this way beautiful this is the last one this is called the rocker oh good now what i want to do is uh, that's it basically so our 3d modeling is done i just want to show you this uh one more time so say i decide oopsie let's go back to front yes so say that i decide to uh change my design at this point so if i go to edit sketch here and then i don't know make this 150 mils it was 100 so make it 150 mil if i stop sketch simple everything else will update beautiful awesome um okay i'm just gonna undo this just to show you the original design and then we can go back to play around so basically right now i have nothing to do but just make connections between these uh, components. To do that, I'm just gonna click on Shift J. This is the as-built joint. You can get this from here as well. As-built joint, which is Shift J. So as-built joint, and then I'm gonna select both components, select the location, and that's it. So I wanna have a connection between the frame and the crank at this point. So revolute, beautiful, that works. And shift J again between the frame and uh, the cup, uh, sorry, the rocker at this point. Revolute, that works. Let's keep going between this and this. And at this point, that works. The last one, shift J between this and this at this point. That's basically it. If I had the joints now and then move this and you can see uh, this mechanism is now working. I can actually show these joints, go here, oopsie. I can show these joints and I can right click the main joint and click on animate model and then you can see the whole mechanism working around and moving. Um, now, just to tap this off and finish off the video, if I go back to my kinematic diagram sketch, edit the sketch and click this instead of 100, just make it 150. Okay, so click stop sketch. Beautiful, that's it, everything updated. Right click this, click animate model. That's the new mechanism. 
Do you see how beautiful and powerful this is? So basically the workflow is, you imagine something, you put it in game software, you take a screenshot, you take it here, put it in, an, in a canvas, structure your model properly. You have one sketch, the kinematic diagram, one sketch called mechanism skeleton. From that one, ex, um, extrude all the components differently. And then uh, you don't like this one, you don't like this one, maybe this mechanism has to be tweaked. And then you go back to game software, change it again, put it back here, change one sketch, everything else will update. Now, this is just the very, very basic, but imagine you have, um, you have um, yeah, I don't know, you have an assembly with maybe four mechanisms. I had an assembly with three mechanisms in my kinetic sculpture, and these three mechanisms have to go back and forth, back and forth, to make sure that the mechanism works together. The timing between them is, is good and working well, and this is the workflow that I've used. If you want to check that out, click the links in the description below. You can see uh, some of the work I've done in uh, um, kinematic sculptures course. Really, really solid stuff. Guys, that's it guys, that's all I have for you today. Like this video if you liked it, dislike this video if you disliked it. Subscribe and turn on the notifications for more videos. I promise I'll do my best to keep uploading one, vid one video each, each week. Uh, feel free to check my courses on Udemy, that would be a great help for me to keep this channel going. Thank you very much, I'll see you next time.